Hello, my name is Jack Milne with Tri-County Inspection Company and the House Whisper Show. The other day via email at hello at tricountyinspectors.com, I was asked to provide comment on battery backup sump pumps versus water actuated sump pump backup systems. So as a background, uh, primarily here in Bucks County and probably across the country, homes are being built with sump pits. Uh, a builder can never guarantee if a house is going to take on water, uh, so let's create a pit. If need be, let's put in a pump, and then we can direct this water elsewhere. Now, primary sump pumps uh, typically work great, but what happens if we lose power? then all of a sudden the pump's not going to work. And in another episode, we're going to talk about new construction where they now require groundfall protection on the sump pump, but again, that's a late, at a later date. So a primary sump pump should direct water away from the foundation by at least three to four feet. I've seen some homes where, you know, it goes eight to 10 to 12 feet away, but during the winter months, that line can freeze which in essence is going to put water back in the basement. And by the way, um, on a sidebar, make sure with your homeowner's insurance that you do have sump pump protection so that, God forbid, if something does occur uh, and the pump fails, if you ruin your carpet or your drywall in your finished basement, you have coverage for that, and it's pretty cheap. So please look into that for me. So let's, let's play the other card. What happens if we do have pump failure? Years ago, we, we were kind of uh, dependent on what we call battery backup sump pump systems. In essence, it's a marine grade battery um, <clears throat> in a case with a pump and with an alarm. So if, this, if your primary went off or the battery backup wasn't working properly, um, you were notified. The problem is, is that battery backup sump pumps require maintenance roughly every three months by putting distilled water in the cells. Now, I had one of those two, and um, literally, I kept a gallon of distilled water in a turkey baser close by, marked it on my calendar, and then I'd fill up those cells. The problem with the battery backups is that they're uh, unreliable. So if you lose power, you don't know if that battery is going to work for four hours or for 10 minutes. So if you currently have a battery backup sump pump, take the casing off the top of the battery and check your cells. But again, do not use tap water because that will affect the cells uh, within the battery. Now, let's move forward 10 years, okay? Now they've come out with something called a water actuated sump pump backup system. Through my friends at um, uh, U.S. Supply in, in Bristol, Pennsylvania, they were able to uh, let me borrow one. And, and this is what it looks like. So what happens is at your incoming water source, they're going to run a three-quarter inch line and connect it here. Now, this still sits in the sump pit, but this is the in injector where it pumps the water out, but this is the float. Now, the float is going to sit above the existing sump pump. Now, the beauty of this system is that if you lose power, you never lose water. So for every gallon of, of public water that you use, you're pumping out two gallons of your sump pit water. Now, the cost of the pump, okay, is about $170 to $180, which is just about the same cost as a marine-grade battery for your battery backup sump pump. Now, two things that come to mind. First off, uh, make sure that in your sump pit, uh, the water is clear, okay? Sometimes you look into sump pumps and it's basically a stone bed. There's a little bit of mud or muck in the bottom of it. The, this strainer here, has to be in clear water, not disturbed water. The other thing is that you cannot discharge any sump pump into the sanitary sewer, okay, except for in the cities. Now, Philadelphia, where I'm, you know, outside of, will allow sump pump water to go into the sanitary sewer. Why? Because they, they regenerate it for future use. But in most of the suburbs, it's a finable offense of up to about $1,000. Um, and I'd say probably about eight or nine years ago, where I live, you know, there was a knock on the door um, because they wanted to see where my sump pump was being drawn to. So I was able to show them where it went. 
The reason why the municipalities do not want this water to go into the sanitary sewer is that they now have to pay to get this water regenerated. So they found it ironic that during the dry periods, um, it wasn't a real big issue you know, with, the, um, uh, with these re regeneration stations, but when it rained, their numbers went up exponentially. Uh, so one of my neighbors did get caught. That's how I know what the fine was. Installation costs, and I knew that was going to be the next question. For uh, a battery backup sump pump system, roughly $500, once again, because of the battery. This pump, again, about $170, $180, but you're looking at around the same price of about $500. Now, where can this not be used? It can't be used if you have a well because if you lose power to your home, well, this isn't going to work. That's where those folks have to go ahead and rely back on the battery back up, okay? Um, I would say that if I had a choice, for personally I have a generator, but if I didn't, this is what I'd be going with. It's almost foolproof. And uh, again, it's, it's gonna sit in the pit. It does require some bracing so it doesn't shift left or right. And again, a three quarter inch line. From everything that I've read, shark bites are acceptable connections. So, you know, if you're handy, you might be able to do this yourself, but if you're not, of course, a plumber can take care of it for you. So if you have any questions, you like the content, please feel free to reach out uh, to me at the hello at tricountyinspectors.com and push the subscribe button below.